In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I invite us to come to God in prayer. Let us pray. In light of the hymn that we have sung, revive your work, O Lord, within us. Revive your, our faith in you and our trust in you. That as we participate and as we hear your word, that you may direct our path to be part of the new thing that you are doing in our lives and in the, in the world. We acknowledge the presence of your Holy Spirit. We acknowledge of the direction and inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Speak to us, we are listening. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our great Redeemer. This we ask in no other name but in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. The district bishop, the district secretary, superintendents and ministers, and our dear men within the South Caribbean district and our members. I invite us to ponder on the theme that has been given for me in light of the reading of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 14 to 21, with the theme, Behold, I am about to do a new thing. But in the light of the text, I invite us to reflect on this edition. Behold, I am about to do a new thing, a new exodus. Our theme invites us to perceive what God is doing. And in light of the text, what he is doing is liberating his people on a journey, on a new exodus from Babylon to the promised land that had been promised to them that they now have to return to. This theme reminds us that God is about to do a new thing, that God is capable of doing a new thing, that God is doing a new thing, that God will freely and sovereignly do a new thing. This notion of God in relation to a new thing is placed in a coherent account as the prophet Isaiah writes, beginning with Isaiah 42. God called Israel to be his servant, yet in Isaiah 42, verse 18 to 25, Isaiah identifies that the servant of God, the people of Israel, had a problem. They have not been faithful to their role and capacity as servants of God, that they were now blind and deaf. They did not observe, nor they hear. And as a people, they have lost hope. They have not understood, nor taken to heart their role as being servants of God. But in the midst of that, the narration of how Isaiah writes his book is in Isaiah 43, 1 to 7. The development is, as Isaiah argues, despite the failures of the people of Israel, God reminded them of his unchanging care and love for them in the midst of their own lives. Then the third part of the narration, which is in Isaiah 43, 8 to 13, Isaiah reminded the people not only God had a uncaring care, un failing love and care for them, that he himself in his sovereignty was going to rescue his people. He says in verse 13, I am God and also henceforth I am he. There is no one who can deliver from my hand. I work 
and who can hinder it? Isaiah reminded the people that despite the failure of Israel, God continued his caring for his people, his unchanging care, and also he is going to sovereignly do what he is about to do, and no one is able or capable of stopping him. And this leads to the portion of our scripture reading today, Isaiah 43, verse 14 to 21, in which God has a word for his people. He invites them to forget the former things, because behold, I am doing something new. Forget the former things. Behold, I am doing something new. It is an invitation to his people that there was a new exodus set before them, that they as God's people was about, as it has already begun, to experience God liberating work from the bondage of Babylon that were, they were about to embark on a journey in which God was the cause of that journey and they must be part and participate in this new exodus. To us to reflect two points today in this light of God doing a new exodus with the theme, behold, I'm about to do a new thing, a new exodus. Receive the new exodus, the first point. The second point, prepare and proclaim for the new exodus and the praise of the Lord. First point today, receive the new exodus of the Lord. God's invitation is in the context that the people were blinded and deaf, that they did not realize the activities of God that was already present, already in motion, that he was already taking the first step that was going before them on this new exodus, that he was liberating his people, that there was redemption of his people, and that is the new thing that God was doing. But this perception, perceiving of God's new exodus was only possible if they remember not the former things. We are reminded as we are called to behold the new thing of God, to let go of the former things. In this context of text, the former things that Isaiah was referring to was in verse 16 and 17. Thus says the Lord, who make a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out carrot, chariots and horses, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished and quenched like a weak. Isaiah was telling the people that God did bring the people out of Egypt and they must think about that, but they must not dwell in what God has done in the past. That they, although have celebrated what God had done as a memory, but they must not be held back by the memory of what God has done because God was active in their present life right then and now. This is a call to us as we are called to perceive the new exodus of the Lord. Brothers, Church of Christ, God is calling us not to dwell on our past, but to recognize that he is very much alive and active now. While our God was in and active in the past, he wants to remind us that we 
must not remain in the past because his actions are not only the actions of the past, but the actions of now. The liberation of God is not only a memory to God's people, it is something that we must perceive and expect in our lives. To forget the former things is not to behold the past, but to behold the active work of God that is present now. God is working and still working in our midst. It is important in the light of this reflection that our memory of the past must not be bigger than our hopes of God and our hope in what God is doing anew in our presence. At times, we glory in the past achievements. In our conversations, is a conversation, oh, we should return when that time, in that time, in that period, in that season, we were really alive, things were very vibrant. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a call to perceive the new exodus of the Lord is a call to recognize what God is presently doing in our midst. And I remind us, he is doing what he does best, that is doing a new thing. God's promise is for something new for you, for your life, for your family, for your church, for your congregation. Something for us to live for today. We do not live for the past, but we live with the realities of what God is doing right now. The past can teach and illustrate, but it, no, it must not bind and restrict us. Even as we celebrate the sacrament, which is a memory of what God has done, we also celebrate it is a future that something that will be fulfilled. But we are also reminded, like what Isaiah was informing the people of Israel, it is also something that we must expect of God doing right now in our lives. God, the Lord always has greater things in store for us. That is the hope we have as a church, as people of God, in the midst of a dying world, to perceive what God is doing, the new thing. Look around you, look within you, look above. Something new God is doing. Behold it, my friends and brethren in Christ. Brethren in Christ. It is something important for us to reflect on as we are called and invited today to behold the new thing that God is doing. The new thing that God invites us to perceive is also seen in the light, not only about forgetting what of the past, but how God turned the barriers of the past into the blessing of today. See, in the story of the Exodus from Egypt, the water parted as a barrier to separate the people of God from the Egyptian army. But in verse 20, verse 19 and 20, Isaiah writes, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the desert. I will make a way in the wilderness and the river in the desert. In verse 20, I will give water in the wilderness, river in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. What are Israel to perceive? Israel is to expect of what was once a barrier that provided the means and the way for them to go through the Red Sea. Now the water has become a blessing, a source of nourishment 
for them. We are now faced with a global pandemic. The church asks, how could be this season a blessing to us? Brothers and sisters in Christ, God is a God of pre-COVID. God is a God of post-COVID. But foremost, God is a God within COVID. God is doing a new thing. And for us as people of God, we must not lose hope even as we go through this season. How we operate as a church, how we continue as church, how we continue as God's people is not determined by us, but it is determined by the work of God and the new things that he does in the midst of all. And foremost, how God can turn barriers into blessing. This barrier of COVID that may to some has seen as a way to hinder the work of God in the church as people of God. We are invited today to perceive the new exodus of the Lord. Behold, I am doing something new. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the God who worked before COVID is the same God who is working in and through this season. We are invited to perceive, to connect, to open our lives and be the channel in which God works in and through us to continue to bless the world in this time and in this season. A second point, this evening, prepare and proclaim the new exodus of the Lord and his praise. Verse 21, Isaiah sums up what God was doing and this invitation to behold what he was doing in this word. The people whom I have formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. God did not only want the people to perceive the new thing that he was doing. God invited the people that they may declare his praise, that they participate in this new exodus of the Lord to propel to the world his power that nothing can take away the ability for God to do new things in a dying world. A few days ago, I've been involved in a seminar participating in a discussion on how to do theology in the new world era that we are in. And one of the definition of the church which was formulated, which is striking, and it comes and captures what Isaiah is trying to invite us here today. Men of the South Caribbean district, people of God in the South Caribbean district, the, the concept of the church, it states that the church is the context of the world. That the church is the context of the world that it is the context in which the world meets God and it's transformed in which people participate, declare, and be part of the new thing that God is doing that moves us forward. The church is not defined by the building, by a program, by a name or a legacy of a person. The church is defined by what God is doing and where the world is going. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the world is moving to be a community that God forms and in which God's praise will be declared. I invite us here today that we are called as a people to be a people who is redeemed by Jesus Christ. The work that he has done on the cross, not of our own, not of our effort, 
but of the work of God in the work of the Holy Spirit, bringing, seeking, and save the lost as the church is commissioned. We are called to prepare and proclaim this new exodus because of the present of what God is doing in and through us, that we have a hope in the midst of all circumstances. The church is the context of the world. One may say, how come we are in the world but not of the world? But this definition reminds us that the world is not what it is. The church is what the world ought to be. And we as people of God must open ourselves to the new thing that God is doing. What we ought to be, what the world ought to be, is in what God is doing right now. And we prepare and continue to declare that new exodus in our journey. I would like to end today as we reflect on these two points, a familiar phrase, in order to go where we have never been, we have to do something we have never done. If we want to grow into an ever increasing closer walk with God, we are invited, brothers and sisters in Christ, brethren, people of God within the South Caribbean district, we must allow to have a closer look and a closer walk with God. Perceive, behold, prepare, declare the work of God has begun and the work of God will continue despite it transcends all season and all time. We must accept this invitation here today. As we sit in the vicinities of our homes, as we open our hearts to the Spirit as it blows over the land, God is calling us, forget the former things. If the South Caribbean district, the men's fellowship, organizations of the church has hold on to former things, gloried in former things, in the memory of the past, I invite us that we can have a new memory because God is doing something new right now. Allow God to open our eyes as people of God. Allow God to channel our lives to the change that does not come from men, but the channel, the change that comes from the new thing that he is doing. Indeed, there is a wilderness, and there will always be wilderness in our journey. But we have a God who is building a path. There is a desert, but we have a God who allows a stream of flowing water. We have barriers, but we have a God who turns barriers into blessing. God loves doing new things. Expect new things in our life as Christians now. I invite us as people of God to allow God to open our hearts, to open our eyes, to open our ears, to recognize what God is doing in our lives, in our community, and the church. I assure you, the same God who liberated Babylon is the same God who will liberate us. I assure you that the same God who had a new thing 2,000 years ago is the same God who has a new thing, a new event, a new opportunity, a new hope, a new life, giving life in Jesus Christ to you and to me. Open our hearts, receive the new thing that God is doing, perceive the new exodus, prepare and proclaim the new exodus of the Lord and the praises of the Lord. God is doing a new thing now. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
I invite us as a time of reflection to come to God in prayer. Brethren, perceive the new exodus of the Lord. Perceive the life-flowing river in the wilderness as God forms and creates his people. Prepare and proclaim the praise of God as we participate in the new thing that God is doing in the church, in our lives, and in the world today. Wherever you are, in the silence of your heart, say, yes, Lord, I behold what the new thing that you are doing in my life in my family, in the church, and in the community. Dear God, as we send your word and proclaim your word today, we declare that we perceive the new thing that is ours in Jesus Christ, that you are doing in our midst in our lives, in our community. You invite us not only to perceive, but to prepare, to proclaim, and participate in this new exodus that we recognize that you are active, that you are alive, that you are doing great things in the world today. We pray a blessing upon your people we pray as we go on this journey, liberate us, redeem us, save us, revive your work, O oh Lord, in this vineyard. That the fellowship of men may become the ministry of men, partakers in the new thing that you are doing in the Caribbean. This we ask in no other name, but in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.